Algae happens. Welcome to part two of my series on algae. This week I will show you the different kinds of algae that you might encounter in your Aquarius adventure. I will also explain how to regain control of your aquarium if ever you are infested by these kinds of algae. Hi, I'm Rochelle from Quebec Cyclidé, your local fish store in Terrebonne, Quebec, right outside of Montreal. last week's video, I explained how during your regular maintenance, you can control the algae in your aquarium. The thing is, no matter how hard we try, sometimes, well, that just doesn't cut it and we can get infested with algae. Brown algae, also known as diatom algae and silica algae, is the first one that technically you are going to encounter in your aquarium adventure. It is present in most tanks that are cycling, meaning that there is ammonia nitrite, and also in aquariums that might have ammonia problems, even if there are fish in it. You will find brown algae rampaging in your tank. It'll be on the walls, on the substrate, on your decorations. It'll be everywhere. It's usually a sign of poor water quality in your aquarium. Take control of the ammonia nitrite in your tank by creating a good environment in your filter for the proliferation of beneficial bacteria. Inadequate filtration and not properly rinsing your filter are major contributors in ammonia problems for your aquarium. Once the conditions aren't optimal for this algae, it will wither away and be taken over by the green algae, which is a lot more beneficial for your tank and is delicious for your algae eaters. Algae eaters will not eat brown algae, but I also suggest not even trying to put them in. If you have ammonia problems in your aquarium, don't add fish in it. You will encounter many kinds of green algae in your aquarium. I'm not going to list all of them here, but I'm going to list the main ones. So let's see the different kinds of green algae and how to control them or get rid of them if ever you have an infestation. This is the most normal algae you can find. It's beneficial for your tank because it feeds off of nitrates and phosphates, but it's an eyesore. This is the algae that snuffs out the diatome algae. Regular maintenance should keep it in check. If ever you have too much, put some algae eaters in your aquarium and they will eat it completely. These are the ways of getting rid of it manually, but if you don't tackle the problem at the source, the chances are that when you're taking it off, it'll just release its spores and it will come back. If you find yourself invaded with this kind of algae, the chances are that you have too much nitrates and or phosphates in your aquarium. Test your water. If your nitrates and phosphates are very high, you're gonna to want to do daily water changes of about 25% in order to bring them down. If you don't have any algae eaters at this point, only add them when the nitrates and phosphates are back to normal. These can be toxic for fish in high quantities. It's a slow killer. Each fish reacts and adapts differently. If the fish in your aquarium are doing well in high nitrates, it's because they adapted. Adding a fish from an aquarium that doesn't have high nitrate could be dangerous for this fish and it might get sick and perish. Green algae will also thrive if your lighting bulb is getting old. So if it's been six months to a year since you last changed your bulb, you're probably due to change it. Green spot algae looks like, you guessed it, hard green spots. These will appear in a tank where phosphates are higher than they should. Most algae eating fish are ill-equipped to eat this algae, but Nerita snails are the best. What's also great about this snail is that it will not breed in a freshwater aquarium, meaning that you won't have to deal with a snail infestation while you're dealing with your algae infestation. So let's say you've tried all this and your rocks and decorations are still filled with green spot algae, can't take it off. Take these decorations and put them in a five gallon bucket, fill it up with water, put a couple of caps of biodegradable bleach. Let it evaporate. I usually let it go for a week, but it should technically take less time. Once the green spot algae is off your decorations, change the water. So get rid of the bleach filled water and put just regular water in. You can also use water conditioners. Whatever you do, just make sure there's absolutely no bleach left before putting your decorations back in the aquarium. You probably didn't need a YouTube video to tell you this, but I'm saying it anyways. Whatever you do, don't wash your rocks in the dishwasher. There's a lot of soap and contaminants that can get on them and that will definitely kill your fish. 
hopefully you've only heard of this algae and aren't living it. Floating algae is what you see when your aquarium water turns completely green. Don't worry, your fish are not suffering. But the aesthetics of your aquarium and your beautiful living room with a tank in it, that's definitely suffering. This algae usually appears with drastic changes in water parameters. It usually happens in the championship season when the temperature varies like crazy. If you don't have a good water heater, buy one right now. Close this video and go buy yourself a water heater. I don't even know how you got this far without a water heater. So you have guessed that the first parameter I'm going to have you look at is the temperature. Make sure that it is stable. If your water temperature is stable, the second most popular culprit is nitrate. This happens when your tank is extremely polluted. So ask yourself a couple questions. How long since your last water change? Are your water changes regular? If the answer is along the lines of, well, you know, life gets in the way, I didn't have time, you probably have a nitrate problem. If this is the case, change your water 25% every day until you reach an acceptable nitrate quantity in your aquarium, which would be under 20 ppm. Don't forget to add your water treatment products every time you make a water change to adapt your other water parameters, pH, GH, and all that. There's a video about those, go check that one out later. If your temperature and nitrate are under control and you still have this algae, the third most popular culprit is fertilizer mainly an imbalance in potassium or carbon or CO2. If you've overdosed on fertilizer recently, do a couple water changes and you should get back to normal. Now that we know what the sources of the problem are and you've probably tackled these sources, the algae is sp still spiraling out of control in your aquarium. The best way to get rid of floating algae is with a UV filter. This will kill the algae and you will be able to have your water clear again very soon. Once the UV kills the algae though, this algae is dead and it's still in your aquarium, creating a huge strain on the bacteria in your filter because it's an insane amount of bio load right there. Don't forget if you have an infestation of this algae to siphon out the dead algae that your UV sterilizer fixed. There are many kinds of green filament algae that you will encounter in your aquarium hobby. This algae, as the others, will appear in aquariums where the water parameters are way off, especially nitrate and phosphate. It will also appear if you have overdose on certain fertilizer. In the Embuna Aquarium or an aquarium with a lot of algae eaters, you will not see this, this algae because it doesn't have time to grow. This is not an excuse not to do your regular aquarium maintenance though. Contrary to the name, this algae is usually black, dark brown, or even sometimes dark green. It is the sturdiest algae that you will encounter. It's also one of the hardest to get rid of because your algae eaters will not touch it. These usually appear in aquariums with poor water quality. Fix that up to stop the proliferation of this algae. The only problem is, if you have it, just that is not gonna get rid of it. This algae can also enter your aquarium through contamination. If you buy a fish or plant that was in a tank with this kind of algae, you might have introduced it to your aquarium like that. To remove this algae, if it's on plants, you can try to either pluck the dead leaves if there are a couple of leaves only on the plant that are affected. If all the leaves on your plant are affected, you can try taking it out and rinsing it with a 10% peroxide solution. You can also rinse your decorations with peroxide in order to take it off. Don't forget, before putting it back into your aquarium, to rinse it completely. Make sure that you get all the peroxide off and all the dead algae as well. This algae really strikes a chord for us Quebecers. For years, our beautiful Lake Champlain and many other lakes in Quebec have been infested with the blue-green algae. In regular amounts, cyanobacteria isn't toxic. But in high quantities, it can be toxic for small animals and fish. So if you go to Lake Champlain, don't eat the fish. We're Aquarius anyways, we probably shouldn't be eating our aquarium fish's cousins. Cyanobacteria, even though I put it in this article about algae, isn't an algae. It's a sort of algae and bacteria hybrid. Mostly bacteria. It's called cyanobacteria. So. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it anyways. So cyanobacteria looks slimy and it can be found in aquariums that are in dire need of some TLC. With, of course, you guessed it, poor water quality. In the case of Lake Champlain, high levels of phosphorus, which is a component of phosphate, it's the P in PO4, and phosphorus, that is literally a key ingredient in 
fertilizer brought on by increased human activity and development brought the cyanobacteria explosion in Lake Champlain. Back to your aquarium. To get rid of it in your aquarium, it's a lot easier than in our lakes. Just scrape it off the panels and scrub it off your plants and your decorations. It should come off a lot easier than the red algae we saw earlier. As for the cyanobacteria on your rocks, on your decorations, and in the little crevasses in the plants, just siphon it out. Once this is done, get back to your water changing routine that you've probably been procrastinating. It's okay, I don't judge. Cyanobacteria also thrives in low oxygen environments. So get yourself some water circulation pumps and air pumps with bubblers to oxygenate your water. Make that water surface move. If you only have cyanobacteria in one part of your aquarium, you can take your power head and aim it right at that. It will not establish itself if it can't grab onto it. Cyanobacteria will also appear if your bulb is getting old. So you're probably due for a nice change. Cyanobacteria is one of the first living organisms on this planet, so it's extremely resistant. Take care of your aquarium, make regular water changes, and change your bulb every six months to a year, and it shouldn't want to establish itself. Since it's a bacteria, some people will talk about adding certain antibiotics to the aquarium in order to treat it. I strongly disagree and discourage you from doing this don't over medicate or just simply medicate your fish if you don't have to. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Have you ever been infested by algae? Share your story in the comments. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. There's new content being added every week. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.